What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Judge Chat Yu Gi Oh! podcast. And today I am joined with a couple of new faces. So it's, of course, me, and then we have. Uh, who, who wants to go first? I don't know. <laughs> you, you. You spoke first. You go. <laughs> That's cool. I'm Hatch. You already know me. You already know what's up. Yeah. Uh, new icon, uh, new, same old voice. New, same new old... Toho girl, same old guy. You already know <laughs> yeah. what's up. All right. We've also got uh, Luca. Hi, right. I'm Luca or Amani. I don't care which one you call me. <laughs> and then finally, we have Austin. Hi. I don't know why I'm here. I'm not a judge. I barely play this game. That's fine. <laughs> wow. you're, just, you're just here. You're, you know what? You're the, uh, you're the like 95% the because apparently <laughs> a large majority of people do not play Yu-Gi-Oh! competitively, which is very odd to hear. That's also true, yeah. It's very true, but it's very weird to hear about like 70 to 80% of the Yu-Gi-Oh! player base does not play competitively at all. Because I think as judges, both Hatch and I, and Luca to some extent, I don't know how, how deep into judging you are, we are in a microcosm of of the Yu-Gi-Oh! community where everything is competitive, everyone is trying to perfect decks, everyone is trying to play the best deck they possibly can. Yeah. So At least that's like the bulk of the people I, I hang around at least. Yeah, yeah. so today's just going to be kind of a chill episode. Uh, we're just going to be talking about, you know, the meta, how we feel about it, maybe some bandless predictions. So uh, let's go around the room and say, say what we're playing. So uh, for those of you who haven't been watching my channel for the past like week or so, uh, I have been uh, on Unchained and and variants of it. Uh, I took it to a regional, and I did better than I thought, but not as good as I wanted to do. <laughs> so, it happens. Um, Patch, I think you're still on your classic uh, Vanquish Soul deck with some some changes, some some new, yeah, uh, well, new cards. Yeah, it is a, as the famous saying goes, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Uh, quarter circle back. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm still being cool. Uh, yeah. We can talk like for a second about you know how you should play the new Balan Boxer XC because it finds rosin even through droll, and that's like based. Yeah, but that's like really about it. Yeah, no, we sh like we got to do a new a new deck profile for Vanquish Soul because the changes actually matter. Like it's only like two or three cards, but they actually matter. Yeah, honestly, I'd rather like do the other deck profile until after um, Age of Overlords when uh, Xiao Long comes out. But I don't know. That's fair. All right, uh, Luca, what are you playing lately? Uh, so I actually haven't been playing much Yu-Gi-Oh lately, like since um, uh, since Nats. So okay. I played, so like I played um, Runic Lifewind Sprite at Nats, and then uh, didn't do great. Uh, de definitely didn't do as well as I had hoped I would, but you know, it, that that's a, that's also just kind of the consequence of like not really practicing as much as I should have. Um, yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately, the timing of Nats just came at, like, a really weird time for me, where it was, like, um, just some personal stuff was going on. I just didn't really have as much time to test or prepare, so, and it reflected my performance. However, I did end up top fouring in OTS the week later, so I have my invite for next year. That's great. Very cool, um, very cool. So yeah, I was playing on that, I was playing that deck, and then now I'm not really playing a ton, so I, like, am still kind of paying attention to what's happening in the meta. Um, I have my eye on a couple decks. I'm looking at Unchained. I think Unchained, like, it's actually pretty solid. Um, it looks yeah, really cool. Sure. Um, the Chimera deck, like, the more I learn about it, the more, like, I think that deck's, like, really, really um, interesting. Like, the fact that, like, a single quad will just kind of, like, set you up with, like, can go can get you, like, a plus one and a hand rip and a targeting protection and a monster negate. It's just, like, okay, cool. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people just didn't realize crazy. how strong the, the illusion cards were. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, my my defense is that I just don't read cards ahead of time. Um, Who by does? the time Duelist, so true. And then by the time Duelist Nexus came out, like I just wasn't really paying attention to uh like the meta anyway. Um, uh, the, this format just kind of dog water until they ban our eyes, heart, and smile. Um, true. But... <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Austin, what uh, what are you playing lately? You you said you're more casual, so uh, hopefully you play some fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm more casual, as in meaning I'm only just recently getting back into playing the game paper at all. Mm -hmm. um, I personally, I just went to a card shop, bought a box of Wild Survivors a little while back, and then just built Dinos, which has been yes. kind of fun. I mean, uh, Dinos but... just topped uh, Remote Dual Regional. Uh, it did, yeah, it did just get a top. Yeah, by cool. Giant Skyhawk. The, the boy, yeah. the, the giant avian individual. Yeah, otherwise, uh, personally, I'm 
showing more interest in like Edison format, I think I'd like to get into that more. Very oh, fun. Yeah. I still that stuff. I don't think we've done an, a podcast episode where we talk about Edison. Both Hatch and I play Edison like on a weekly basis together, but I don't think we've ever done an episode on it. I would love doing Edison podcast. That'd be a banger. Yeah. I mean, that one I might actually be able to talk about. To, be, to oh, be like 100% fair, I'm you can do, do like 100 episodes of an Edison podcast. So. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. All right. So uh, that's that's where we all kind of stand. So uh, let's talk about uh, Duels Nexus and to a lesser extent, uh, was it Raging Volcanoes, Duelists? We don't have to talk. Blazing Volcanoes or whatever. There's, there's all there's all of three cards that are good in that set, and we all and, and we all know those they cards are. are two copies of Battle and Boxer King Dempsey. All right, so <laughs> King Dempsey is an insane card for the future of Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, Salamangrate of Fire has proven that it is an actually strong card, and Salamangrates are playable if you explore past Baguska access code. Yeah, that's true. And then yeah. uh, oh, there's I know there's one more that's like actually decent, but I'm I'm blanking on it. Um, well, there's the, the Salmon Great Link 4 as well, which is like the reason why you should not be doing Baguska Pass anymore. Yeah, but um, I feel like there's one other card that I, I might just be blanking on. Um, no, the, volcanic, like, the volcanic stuff is actually impressive. Uh, I just put up a volcanic deck profile on my channel uh, today, actually, as of recording this. And uh, it is uh, surprising how strong that deck is. And it's strong in the sense that I think it just overwhelms and... Uh, it overwhelms the opponent because they don't know what any of the cards do, and they refuse to read them. <laughs> yeah, I, I think... I don't know. I The volcanic stuff, I think it's, like, fine, but maybe, like, a regional top eight. I don't really see you doing, like, I think the, a whole I think lot. the volcanic... From what I understand of the volcanic cards, I think the problem that they have is, like... I still just don't really know how the volcanic cards, like, win, I guess, for lack of a better... Yeah, like, aside from, like... like they're, like, it feels like their win condition it, in and of itself is still kind of just, like, um... You let like, it burn, and then, like, hope that you can just, like, get in a couple attacks, and that's, like, it. Yeah. I will or say like, this. Or, so like, I... burn, or, like, burn and try to pull off, like, the uh, Blaze Accelerate Reload, like, scatter shot play. Yeah, yeah. so... And I feel like what... both of those players are too telegraphed to really, like, do much. Yeah, so when I did the deck profile with a, a friend of ours at Locals, um... He told me, and we didn't go through the combos, but he told me your usual uh, game plan is actually an opponent's turn one uh, is an FTK. So if you go first on your opponent's first turn in their draw phase, you will just burn them to death. I mean, yeah, that, that's fair. Yeah, so that's 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 like the overall game plan. And also, like, it does have a very strong resource loop. Uh, it does do burn damage almost every turn, like... I think I was being burned for 15 to 25 every turn uh, when I played against it. Like, that that sounds, like, interesting, but what, when you're putting it that way, it's just like, damn, these are all things that Vanquish Soul do, does, but, like, <laughs> better. <laughs> they just play Vanquish Soul. Yeah, so uh, that, it's, it's, it's got some cards for future application, but uh, Soul Burning Volcano or whatever the set is called is, is not, not the best. Um, oh, like, wait. Duelist Nexus, I think, has become a very underrated set um, because a lot of yeah. the a lot of these suppliers, the vendors, and everything are complaining uh, up and down the river that the set has lost them money. Uh, when all the players are actually thrilled about the way that Duelist Nexus is structured, uh, uh, yeah, think, yeah, I like think... um, like besides Revolution Synchron, I don't think a single card in that set is worth over like twenty bucks. If uh, the new so I will Chimera, say, I will say the Chimera Fusion. Yeah, it's it's like credible. oh okay yeah, like, it's, it's, like, it's like, getting up like, towards thirty bucks. Like yeah. yeah, after these like last two weekends, the card has spiked really hard, which is it's, unfortunate it's for me because you know. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll be real. At, like at release weekend, I thought the set was overall kind of weak from like a gameplay perspective. Because um, I'll be real. I still think Revolution Synchron is like. A CIA post, like I don't think it's actually real. I don't think it's. I don't think the decks that played are good, and I don't think the combos and enables are good. Um, and then outside of that, there's like what? Evolzer Lars is like a rank six negate. That's it's a like generic fine. rank six that is a non once per turn hot red dragon arch fiend. Yeah, and like that's fine, but like I don't know. Like at release, it just didn't seem like a set that would like I think really the problem do with, um... a lot. Um, the problem I've noticed with like Rev Synchron specifically, because I do kind of want to talk about that a little more. Um because yeah. Rev Synchron was like really hyped on like announcement because like of all like there are a lot of cool things you can do with it. I feel like part of the problem with it is that like 
Rev Synchron does this thing where it's like you need to like incorporate it into a deck where it's like whatever whatever like four you're using it with has to do something already by itself to justify. Yeah, exactly. Sort of, like like the deck so for example, like people pair it with like adventure because it's like you can act you can make the token, get like another four, and then like do stuff like that and it's like fine. Yeah. Um, or there's like the um there's like the ABC build where like you normal summon B and it's like, ooh. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Like, like things like that. Like, and um, the fact that ancient fairy dragon is legal is like another really cool thing because it's like you know you can ancient fairy dragon like blow up um a field spell and then grab another thing and then just like keep going. Um, yeah. One, yeah. I think like those decks again, like those decks just kind of have the same problem where it's like they're all just really pigeonholed around revolution synchron. Yeah, so, that's like, the problem. Part I of the problem, thinking. like part of the problem with like the ABC deck, like even with the adventure stuff, is that it's like if if you open like if you open like hanger plus if you open hanger plus like right you're you're just nice like yeah. you can do what like you could solve cold yeah, just insane. <laughs> if you open yeah. like if you don't open hanger like your, your deck just doesn't do anything yeah. <laughs> yeah. i think and like revolution synchron just doesn't fix that is the problem yeah i think yeah. i think another way to say this is um well motorcycle i think another way to say this is that uh <laughs> Revolution Synchron succeeds in making uh, the decks the decks that it can be put in. It it succeeds in making them making them a, a lot better. However, that does not make the decks good. Yeah, um, Jump Speeder Turbo new... Adventure Synchro Pile ABC. It, it, they they're all kind of yeah. Just getting like, support does not make them good. Uh, like I think I think the only deck where it's like a substantial boost that actually like not only like makes the deck get better but also changes substantially like the way the deck plays is probably like tier element uh because yeah. not only do you get to go into afd to get like pearl or rhino or raid soft like whatever field spell you want you can also make that new v sauce level eight synchro and that enables baron super easily in tier um yeah and that's, that's like pretty cool so um, austin what's what's your yeah. thought on duels nexus from a casual perspective how do you feel about it uh from casual perspective like i said about dino so lars looks cool um <laughs> doesn't even need to be specifically for that deck yeah um i mean i did you know given that when i left the game for quite a while it was around synchro era seeing cards like revolution synchron trying to bring back synchro stuff personally i like the idea of that because i know that stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> but generally speaking it did kind of seem whatever from what i've seen online with like Yuki tubers and stuff, yeah. it did seem kind of meh for most of it, but there was a few I th good things in it. I think the yeah. problem with Dune that we're starting to see now that like this the set is kind of settled for a few weeks is the fact that like I just think Dune just didn't really like change the meta that much. Yeah, yeah. I, like I would yeah, still, like yeah, I, I don't think like it the, like added too many decks outside of like maybe exactly Unchained. Um, yeah, like Unchained, like it made Unchained like rogue but the unchained still just kind of has the issue where one it just can't beat like a rise heart and two it yeah. can't like and two like now people are starting to like shift towards like putting nibiru back into their list and nibiru just shits on yeah. um the, like the i think way, like yeah like the, the way... fact that sprite is no longer a deck really in the meta has i think like made nibiru better and so now um and because of all the like stupid combo decks that are like popping up because of revolution synchron like decks like Unchained suffered because they can't play Revolution Synchron, but they still die to Nibiru, so it's like... Combo yeah. 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 And like the, the Unchained deck, like as someone who's played it, right, the way you play around Nibiru is if you're lucky enough to open the level 6 and Aruha, you can make uh, Wave Hiking as your 5th summon, however it cuts you off of a lot more things. Or you just end on uh, Soul of Rage, Escape, uh, with the pass with Yama and Grave. And that's still like two to three interruptions, but it, it's really not that great. Um, right. The thing I want to say with Dune though is, like, and if people were expecting the set to like completely up in the meta and like completely shake how things were, then yeah, it's a pretty disappointing set. But I think what makes it good isn't that it like completely shook up everything, but it's like it's like DLC for decks that were like yes. decent before, and now they're like actually good. Like like Pearly is a good deck again now. Yeah. Rescue Ace is a pretty good deck now. Uh, yeah. Unchained is like good row, like like we were saying mm -hmm. earlier. And uh, I think in that context, and just like adding and improving decks that were already right. in the game, <laughs> I, th I think it's a really cool set actually. Yeah. Yes. So the I'm last thing I'll say before we move on to the next section uh, is I feel like Dune will go down a lot like Cyber Dark Impact, where 
it might not have been the most like meta warping game changing set on release but as the, as we go further and further there's going to be a lot of just small cards people are like wow this is a decent card this makes my deck playable and it, it yeah. came out in dune <laughs> so no i can definitely see that yeah and I, think what, I think the other thing too um is depending on how like the direction they take the illusion cards just like the illusion like type yes. in general like, yes. depending on how they like flush that out i think dune suddenly becomes like significantly like more worth looking at just because like all the chimera related like the chimera adjacent cards are like illusion cards so yeah if, if you're gonna um, bet on the illusion cards becoming like good like as strong as cybers you know you got to pick up things like nightmare magician and uh the other illusion illusion cards now because they are dog water cheap uh anyways let's go on to the next section so uh, let's talk about the long-awaited ban list. So I feel like everyone pretty much agreed that the last ban list we got, which was the ban list that uh, uh, limited Gamma, banned the Scarecrow, uh, put Unicorn to two, banned Diablosis, it, it, it limited the power of a lot of the top decks, but it in no way removed them from the meta, which in theory sounds good, but the fact of the matter is the decks are just decks that we don't want to play against. Um, well, it, so, it did take Super Heavy Samurai out of the format. like pretty. It, it did completely take Super Which, Heavy. And not it, a safe. God bless. I did not enjoy playing in Super Heavy yeah. Samurai. Yeah. <laughs> Pearly, Pearly was effectively taken out of the game, but now that it has new support, it is back and possibly better than ever. Um, yeah. But there's obviously some cards we want limited. I think we can all agree that we want a Rise Heart gone. Um, I yep. think we can all agree that uh, cards like... Oh geez, I don't know. Cards like uh, Eradicator, Epidemic Virus should probably go. But what are some what are some more niche uh, ban list takes that you might want to see? Uh, let's 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 start with Austin. He's been pretty quiet today. <laughs> how, how if I know? Like I said, I don't even know why I'm here. I barely know. Well, what, what, what's one deck you hate playing against? What, what's like the one deck you hate playing against right now? Uh, again, I barely play this game enough IRL anyway to have an opinion. <laughs> More or less, I've mainly just played Hatch in person. Yeah, that's, so so the so the pigs probably take were Soul Rosin then. Yeah, like, apparently, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could <laughs> see the two. <laughs> I, I could see Rock to one. That limits a lot of the like the recurability of the deck. Banker Souls had like three tops. It's not getting. Yeah, um, I don't think Banker Souls yeah. getting enough for a bit. Well, I guess um, we're talking about tops, right? Let's 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 talk about the elephant in the room, in my opinion, okay. which is which is Ooh. Dragon Link. Oh, um, it did just win a world. It, it, it won won worlds, but it won the worlds format, which is completely different than TCG format. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people are just calling for yeah. Striker Dragon to be banned. Uh, a lot of people one, are like one thing I will say. Space, so. so one thing I will say about the whole like worlds format thing, um, I think that like the Dragon Link thing did just kind of show that um, in the world where Cash Tira isn't a deck, uh, decks like Dragon Link do become significantly better because they don't have to contend with the Rise Heart. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it does kind of, like, I feel like Worlds did just kind of show, like, give us a glimpse of, like, what a post-Arise Heart world would be. And it's like, you want to, like, design a, a ban list around um, Arise Heart, you also do have to consider what the format would look like afterwards. And I think that's where, like, the Dragon Link hits make a lot more sense. Yeah, exactly. Um, my perspective is that, plus also, personally, I'm just not a fan of when, like, an archetype or a deck is good for, like, four years straight like let's be real right <laughs> activate quick launch has been a tier one contending play for four years now uh i, I think, wouldn't I say think tier one but i'd say it's it's one of those things you always have to keep your eye on so I, I, i'd say yeah. tier 1.5 it's i mean there have been formats where it was the definitive best deck in the format. correct yes um, and but, if whatever it wasn't it was still at worst like it would still like get three tops at a ycs you know what i mean yeah um I'm I'm just I'm just sick of seeing Striker Dragon and Spheres. I, I'm I'm sick of Seal Savage any percent speed runs. I just don't <laughs> care anymore, dude. Just ban like Striker, ban Spheres, and ban Quick Launch. Just get them out of here. I just don't care anymore. I mean, in the same vein, though, I can say you know, uh, ban Ray, ban Engage, uh, limit Widow Anchor. So well, the difference is, the, <laughs> well, I would agree with that too. If those cards were actually good, that's the problem. Right, but in my opinion, yeah, okay. it's funny to me how like it is funny that like every time we get like a Sky Striker Unlimit, people are just like, "Yo, they're gonna this deck's gonna ruin Yu-Gi-Oh!" And then Sky Striker doesn't do anything. It's like I feel like we like we forget like even when Striker was like the quote-unquote like best deck, it was the best deck by a very like 
thin to march in. <laughs> yeah, true. But okay, so this it was is never the best deck. It was just better than the other decks. Like, th this is yeah. my perspective from someone who didn't play during toss format and uh, who came back to the game in 2021. Uh, Sky Strikers is just flat out annoying to play against, right? Maybe the mirror matches could be yeah. interesting. Maybe there are yeah. some matchups that are interesting for the deck, but it kind of gets to a point where it's just like, okay, sure, this deck exists and it's just annoying in the same way Cash Tier is annoying. In, uh, in my opinion, at least, uh, where it's just unfun mechanics uh, that die to one single thing. No, I don't quite agree with that. Um, yeah. Well, I think Sky Striker is built in to be like way more resilient to those things than Cash Tira ever would be. And I also think the things that Sky Striker does are infinitely less annoying than Macro Cosmos plus Dryden. Uh, it's like I think those are pretty categorically different things to like, ooh, engage, now I draw a bonus card. You know? Um, I don't know. Just a Sky Striker player I decked out of Nats. That was funny. That was See, really funny. If we're talking about like the ban that I am uh I'm like kind of hoping for. Um and it's it's one of those cards that like I just don't even really wanna say like I wanna see banned is just D Shifter. Because like it's yeah. it's an annoying yeah. card. It is a it is a functionally very annoying card to play against, right? But at the same time, it's also like one of those cards that Ko I just don't think Konami would ban from the perspective of how it plays out in a long game, which is you can use it on your first turn, and that's probably it. The only other deck that can debatably do it multiple times is I... Wanderies and Medulces. So can I just say real quick, um, I would be inclined to agree, except for the fact that in recent memory, I feel like we started to see a shift with like, Part of like how Konami approaches the ban list, especially like post COVID, when like Yu Gi Oh has just kind of like a reached a like all time like record like record breaking numbers in terms of yeah. like viewership and like participation at events. Um, they're starting to put more like you start to see some of these like hits being more based around like like these cards created very either really fun moments on stream or very like annoying moments on stream. So yeah. Mystic Mind, for example, I think a big reason why they did ultimately ban it was like all of like the times when you had a stream, a game on stream where someone would activate Mystic Mind and the game would just effectively end, and you would just have yeah. like twenty minutes of two people passing back and forth decking each other. Like it's just um, bad stream content, even though like if I would, did I can pin statistics on it. It, it had like a forty percent win rate or something like that. Like objectively speaking, it wasn't even a good card for like the last six months before it got banned. But it's just such like it's just such bad gameplay. Yeah. I can pinpoint like several moments where Shifter did a very similar thing where a shifter came down, the opponent shuffled their hand and just said, like, okay, pass, and then just lost the game. Like yeah. <laughs> that is yeah. just as like that is like that, that was like <laughs> wasn't that literally like top eight at Nats this year? Again, it was like, like top eight at Nats. Whatever. It happened in top eight of worlds. <laughs> like Oh yeah, that's like, yeah. Jeremy like <laughs> Jeremy Mitchell, um like Jeremy versus um Steven, like Jeremy just like Shifted him. Steven literally like made a face, looked at his hand, and said, "Cool, set a card, pass." Like, <laughs> Yu -Gi -Oh! yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, oh. and like, so ship. So we have Shifter, Arise Heart, Erad, um, Dragon Link stuff. Is there anything else? I mean, I'm kind of annoyed at Pearly. Like, I'm just kind of tired of seeing it. But, I, I could see. Um, I could. I could see them throw like a. I can like see either, another consistency like, limit to Pearly. Well, like, like either maybe, a sleepy to one or a my friend to one. I think one. Pearly's like really good, but I also like I don't mind it. Like I don't know. I, I think it was kind of weird, Champ, that they hit the deck in the first place, like three weeks after it was actually playable. Yes. Um So I don't I mind it being like arguably the best deck in the format for like another three or four months. Like it's yeah. it's fine. Like there's yeah. there's enough like counterplay, there's enough ways to like beat the deck. To where yeah. it's I feel like the deliciousness, the deliciousness limit. I think it was just it was them just kind of like overestimating how devastating the hits to uh Kashira would be. Yeah, yeah. Where so, it's like they were kind of like they were trying to overcorrect. Where it's like, yeah, we're gonna like hit Cash really hard, but then just to be safe, we're also gonna kill this deck and then like cripple this deck. And, and then Kashira you know, Cash still, still the best deck, anyways. So that was yeah, cool. because well, yeah, because they did those other hits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in a similar uh, set you know amazing defenders what's your guys opinion on on rescue ace because rescue ace ended my uh my run at the uh, fargo regional um, i think rescue ace right now is like tier two it's like 
fine. It's okay. I, I still haven't actually read the Rescue Ace card since I'm like, what's <laughs> that? <laughs> yeah. Um, See, Rescue Ace um, is like, cool. it's the weirdest anomaly to me. It's similar to Punk Gold Pride, right? Where when the deck like was first announced before tinkering with it, they tr- like top players said it'd be good, then they tried it, and then they're like, ah, this deck's actually pretty mid. But then those few, those very few people who decided, you know what, I'm going to keep playing this deck. They made it the strongest deck possible, <laughs> honestly. Oh, yeah. Now, I will admit, my, my tournament run did not end a Rescue Ace. It ended to an Ash Blossom and a Fusion Destiny. <laughs> uh, but still, it's like a lot of people are saying, a lot of top players are saying Rescue Ace is not a deck. And then they turn around and they see, you know, super high res- representation and uh like conversion like decent conversion yeah Yeah, i like i said i think the deck is like i'd say it's like a good deck it's not amazing there's definitely a counterplay to it um but i was gonna say once age of overlord comes out and we get the uh the dead bell stars or whatever they're gonna be called um that deck becomes significantly better and probably tier one um i'm really excited to see what happens with it yeah so uh, that was like bans. What are some? So uh, this wasn't really planned, but what are some cards you guys want to see off the ban list? Harpoor, <laughs> harpoor, <laughs> harpoor. I guess is fair. Um, if we're talking about block cards that just block like dragon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so if we're talking about cards that just like deserve to come off the ban list, I think the obvious answer is Red Rose Dragon. Uh, I don't know if you guys still yeah. don't know this, but Red Rose Dragon is still on the ban list for some Good. reason. Good. Good. Fuck that. I card. actually want that card. Yeah, I actually agree with that. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Know. I don't. I don't think it does a whole. I don't know. Lot. I don't know where you were expecting from us. I, <laughs> I don't just, think that card does a whole. We just sat here lot. for like ten minutes, like explaining why we don't like dragon. Like, why the hell would we make a dragon link? <laughs> <laughs> I don't really see it as band, a dragon link card. Striker, so, okay, no. If it's Bam Striker Dragon, then yes, Red Rose can go to three. But Red Rose was, was limited yeah. because of based, like the the just the synchro no, pile decks. Yeah, no. So so Red Rose was limited because it by itself was the one card like based combo through Striker Dragon. Yeah, sure. And they just wanted to make that like less consistent, essentially. Yeah, but are we really gonna say in it's this format like, that base pile is still like a playable? Deck? Well, no, but like if if you put Red Rose Dragon to three now, like you would still just play. Then, then, like, you could just play Red Rose in Dragon Link. Like, if you put Red Rose to three and kept Striker at one, then you could still just play Red Rose as, like, a Striker Dragon starter. Like, all the combos yeah. are still, like... I suppose, but I don't think Red Rose is necessarily better than normal... Like, normal... I don't think normal Red Rose is necessarily better than normal Black Metal. It's not, but so. at the same time, like, it is still just, like, an option you would have, like... Yeah. All right, so well, let's... Like, let's... You know, like, thing you could do, like, like, there was, like, a point where people were, like, normal summoning uh, that one Dragon Maid card, that Surge Tidying, and that was, oh, like, Chamber. Yeah, Chamber. Yeah, chamber. Yeah, and, like, that. there's just, like, multiple normal summons you can do, and it's kind of, like, at some point, it's just, like, a preference of, like, which one you think is the best. Yeah, I guess, I guess it. All right, so we've already talked about some controversial ones. Uh, so what's what are people's opinions on Called by the Called by the Grave to three? Ban it. Ban it, nope. Absolutely yeah. not. I hate really? so See, okay. I'm going to card that right now, put it to zero. I, I, I have been one of those people who's... So this is my philosophy when it comes to ban list, right? An unfun card like that, that can just be a blowout, blowout it should either be at three or zero. There is no in-between, Agreed. right? Agreed. Like, Agreed. like, take skill just drain, for example, of right? <laughs> like, 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 take skill drain, for example, right? When skill drain is oh, banned, you, banned, you don't have to worry about it. When skill drain is at three, you have to consider it. But when it's at one, it's just an unsearchable one of that. If you if your opponent sees it in their opening hand going first, and they flip it, you do just lose the game. Yeah, and that's why I think like those unfun cards, like called by the grave, like reboot, like skill drain, um, they should all just either be at three and anti spell, either be at three or be at zero. I don't think there is an in between. Yeah, I agree. Um. I just, I just, I just think that uh, the 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 end of the spectrum called by deserves is zero. <laughs> See, yeah. I I could agree with called by to zero if there are more cards that dealt with the graveyard, because uh, I think the I graveyard think is is underestimated in how strong it is. It's not. I think no. At this point, mm, people realize yeah. how strong. Like you see, this was like why people are still playing like crow and bestials and bell and yeah. stuff. Like we I, like I everyone argue, knows like, that the graveyard's a second hand. I right. think the problem with called by is that like. Let me put it to you like this. If part of, like, the reason why modern Yu-Gi-Oh, like, works the way it does is because of, like, just how hand traps work. 
like hand traps like give you the ability to like like as the format has gotten faster like you need hand traps to kind of like help offset that yeah um to to like trade and stuff when you have a card like call by at the three like it, it's, it's basically just like imagine if you imagine if your opponent could just like turn zero like activate bottomless from hand but you could in turn turn zero like chain like a Mid free ju like judgment for zero like yeah in response like it's the same idea right like yeah. actually I think it's like a really good exact comparison if you've ever played like master duel like at any point mm -hmm. ever like tried maxing your opponent and then they ash your maxi it's like the exact same thing yeah it's like yeah it's similar but like yeah, um, yeah it's a similar like, problem, like, yeah. yeah i don't know like call by just kind of like just like i feel like when in the world where like we had like like the only kind of like um counter argument is that like call by does technically help you beat like these turn zero hand traps that are like blowouts like shifter and um and droll right like it beats those cards but at the same time it's like i don't feel like that's really enough to justify like when you have these really powerful combo decks that can like play through like three hand traps already you know yeah now like we we do have cross out designator which is essentially the same thing however it's it's worse in every way <laughs> It is uh, way worse in every way. Yeah. Um, but now, to be fair, like, there are some very funny, like, clippable moments. I'm not saying they're good moments gameplay-wise, but, like, you know, like you said, Maxi, then your opponent chains Ash, you chain Called By, your opponent chains chain Cross Out, tar Calling Called By. And then yeah. they chain Cross Out, Calling Cross Out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a very fun clippable moment, but at the same time, like, I kind of just... I, I like I said, I don't think they should exist in the game, or I think they should just exist unlimited. I think they should exist as a force you don't have to worry about, or a force you have to worry about and you plan around. Because nobody nobody plans around the one of, right? Even we saw this in like worlds and more. It's like if they have the called by, they have the called by. Yeah, that's yeah. something I can do about that. Yeah. Um, so it's like you just can't plan from... around the one of. Yeah, pivoting away from unfun cards to very fun cards, uh, my hot take, that you could ban, unban every single dragon ruler and nothing would happen and it'd be really cool and based. Agreed. Oh, unban him to three, by the way. That's what I meant. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Um, cause I don't, uh, did you guys see it? There's like that new OCG rank seven they announced. That's just a I dragon ruler. I did see game. it, but we don't have a uh, we don't have an no, effect for I, it yet. Do we, we know that it's like named a dragon ruler. It, we do know it's named a dragon ruler. Yeah, well, but I'm we don't have the effect. They're they're finally gonna give us like multiple Redox and shit. And I would love to play a deck with Redox. I think uh, Redox my, is really my fun. funny. My 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 funny uh my unhinged take is a uh, return from the different dimension could go to one probably. It probably could. But like, I think I think return kind of fills this very weird niche of like, it feels very powerful when it resolves, but it's also just a trap card, so it's like inherently yeah. like weaker and like, slow. like I think this is just like a consequence of me playing it so much in like Edison, where it's like in Edison, it's like the game goes long enough where it's like when you flip a return, you're actually getting like a substantial win. Like you're like you're gonna win the game nine times out. Like I can only count like I can count on one hand the number of times. I've like flipped a return and didn't just like win the game almost immediately. You know? Yeah, it's normally when you're forced um, to use return as a call to haunt. Yeah. I think yeah. I think my only problem with that logic is like you could kind of apply the same thing to like sixth sense. And it shows um, that they're just both kind of inherently like unfun broken cards. Yeah. I mean that's fair, I guess. Uh, on the on the other hand though, return is very fun to activate. It's it's yes. very cool. So, the, the serotonin oh. <laughs> um what else? Pot of desires can go to three, please. Smile. Yes, um, please. What's okay, yeah, this like this that. this should probably be our last point because we're we're hit we're pressed in forty minutes here. But uh what yeah. what's your uh, what's your guys' opinion on uh prosperity? A lot of people are saying to to one, to two, to three, they have to hit it, they don't they don't need to hit it. What's your guys' opinion? Um I don't mind if they don't hit it, and I also don't mind if they do hit it. Uh if I was John Johnny Konami and I was in head of I was in charge of the ban list, I I I'd, I'd lean more towards probably like limiting it, I think. Um Yeah. I don't think prosperity is like an inherently like unfun or unhealthy card i think prosperity is like like i think prosperity does create like a lot of like weird situations where like being able to like dig for specific cards can be really annoying yeah um, and, like the fact that you know if you're, especially if like you're going second it's like all right all i need to like break the board is like an evenly matched and now instead of like six chances to see it you have 12 chances i think that kind of does fundamentally break like 
a lot of math in Yu-Gi-Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think the the counter argument to it is the fact that you are banishing at least three or six means that you can't have as strong of an extra deck. So super extra deck reliant combo decks like Dragon Link, for example, can't really afford to play it if they really want to set up a strong board. Um, but that in, inherently doesn't make the card balanced. Right. Yeah, I would also say that like the vast majority of decks, if you really wanted to try, you could condense your extra deck to like ten cards. So that way, Pros being for six just like doesn't matter. I mean, like I was like, playing Prosperity and Unchained, and I did have at least three cards just set aside to banish. It was like Zeus, yeah. Nightmare Phoenix, and the second Soul of Rage. Yeah, it's kind of like the same thing with uh when like Sprite was playing it, where it's like, like realistically, like out of my fifteen card Sprite extra deck, I only ever needed like eight or nine like most of the time so yeah. like i had a pretty good like choice like a pretty good variety of cards i could like very easily like get rid of yeah um so yeah like i said i'd probably limit it yeah sam if i was going to hit it i i would say Sorry. two just because i think it should be <laughs> I, I think you gotta test the waters but I, I can understand the limit i can understand keeping it at three I mean, hey, if Konami what? immediately took me, I took two copies of my desires away, then I feel okay taking away two copies of everyone else. Yeah, I was gonna say roster. one one thing I will say is that like, especially like in recent years, I feel like Konami has really kind of like doubled down on the whole like not liking just these generic like draw cards. Yeah. Um, like we saw that with Sekka going to one, we saw that with like desires getting put to one, like all that stuff. So like, into the void going to the one, things like that. Wait, so, why like, is Sekka went... still limited? I don't want to talk about it, Hatch. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So this is this is just like a, a quick aside, right? Um I was I was browsing on TCG player, you know, like us card game addicts do. And I was I was buying some cards from from a seller and I was at like, you know, 420 something like that, right? And of course, you know, everybody knows, you know, the $5 free shipping and I I wanted my free shipping. Cuz yeah. when when they do 99 cents shipping, if you're at $4, even like 350, you got to think, well, that's just a dollar free I get. And I saw three copies of Sekka's Light on this man's inventory. And I said, hey, Sekka's Light, that's a good card. And I put all three copies in my bin. No. Nah, and then when I checked it out, I was like, ah, wait. Okay, limited. this is limited. And I had already pressed the order and they were on my way to on their way to my door. So Whoops. Yeah. If you I will it's I feel like Sekka's Light kind of feels this weird niche. It's like right in the middle of it doesn't on paper seems strong enough to be at one and it probably isn't strong enough to be at one but if you've ever resolved both effects of like Sekka's Light like at least once in a game like you understand it's why it's at one. <laughs> See in my in my personal opinion right Sekka's Light <laughs> is now just a worse version of Time Tearing Morganite and that card is is doing nothing. There's only like I one or two decks that's playing playing Time Tearing. I think, I think, I think there's a pretty think, big difference. Yeah. Uh, one of them is Pot of Greed immediately. Uh, I... <laughs> yeah sorry no, um good. i think seka's light was cool like because i played a lot of seka's light when it was at three um just because i played like burning abyss and i was yeah, like, like Sekka, yeah. hell yeah that deck was fun and the thing about a uh, seka's light is just the fact that like the types of decks that it like enables are just really interesting yeah because since you can't like you can't really play like spell uh, like other spells and like traps and stuff so you have to really kind of like think more about like the monsters you're playing so the monsters have to be like way more like high impact yeah like you, um, you, you cannot play it in dragon like, link you cannot play it in labyrinth you cannot play it in super heavy you cannot play it in any pendulum deck yeah and yeah so yeah. like it just rewards you for like taking the time to really like look at the other like 37 cards in your deck and say okay like these cards need to be like really really either be really really powerful or really really efficient um and that's like why like the chaos thunder dragon deck was so good because all of your monsters were just either really powerful or really efficient um second ba like almost got there second ba was like you had these you had a good combination of both of those things but like you sometimes you but you did also just have to play cards that like weren't either of those and great, i think that's yeah. where like the deck kind of like fell off um but like it's still even then it still did pretty decent at like even at like a ycs level like it was still getting like tops and wins so it's like yeah right yeah i, I think second light's a cool card it, it enables some cool deck building. For sure. For sure. All right. Well, with that, we got to wrap it up. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, every every one of my guests, uh, where can where can they find y'all if they want to hear more from you? So uh, let's start with Hatch. Uh, um, well, you know me. I'm always 
you know, I'm, I'm making these bum boy progression series videos now. We're we're out here. Uh, and then sometimes I might stream on Twitch. He's There's getting to it. He's getting to it. <laughs> We're working on it. We're working on it. Uh, Pokemon Prison Blind Nuzlocke, uh, Hopium this week, maybe. <laughs> All right. Uh, Luca, do you have a, like social media you want to shout out? TikTok yeah, uh, or something? You guys can. No, not TikTok. Uh, not yet. Um, yeah, you guys, right. Uh, you guys can follow me on Twitter, I guess, at Mihoya Boy. Um, I don't stream yet. I want to start streaming. I actually. Um, my i actually may or may not make my streaming debut next week i'm gonna uh i want to try and do like a grind to um uh so for context i also play like a little bit of like duel links every now and then um and i want to like try and do like a sit down of like i just keep playing until i hit like legend ranks just so i can like qualify for uh the kc cup that's coming up so very cool. so if very i end cool. up doing that keep an eye out smile <laughs> so a uh, quick aside all right so you mentioned we mentioned tiktok right when I first started this channel, um, I was doing exclusively YouTube shorts, right? And a buddy of mine was like, hey, you got to make a TikTok. Post all your shorts on TikTok. They'll get double yeah. the views. You'll get double the traction. I think after like six months, my most viewed sh uh, short is like 70, 70 views. There, yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! does not exist on TikTok. It's the only girl shaking their ass. All right. Uh, anyways, uh, Austin, do you have a, do you have a social media you want to shout out? Do you have a YouTube channel? Anything like that? Uh no, I don't. Best of luck finding me. Uh, real, real quick, he is the enigma. When I, right. when I start streaming, my stream will also be uh, twitch.tv slash me for your boy. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Bye.